Welcome to Will It Build, the series where I take your builds from my YouTube comments and Discord server and put them to the test to see if they are the real deal. If it's solid, then I'll gift you 1,000 silver. And if it's really something special, you'll be featured in a dedicated build video for your submitted build. So comment yours below so we can answer the question, will it build? Will it build the Christmas spe- you know, wait, wait a second. Much better. Now it's official. Will it build Christmas special? First things first, what makes this the Christmas special episode is I have two different announcements that we're going to do throughout the episode that involve a whole lot of giveaways. Obviously, you guys are taking really good care of me this year. I want to give back in any way that I can. So we're going to talk about a ton of giveaways that we're going to be doing this episode and coming up soon. I want to get straight into the build. We don't have a write-up for today's build. I just want to explore something that I've been hearing about nonstop, which is apparently that the Polaris Lance exotic scout rifle plus Dawn Course exotic helmet for Warlock is like the best thing since sliced bread uh, for this season in particular. Put a little something together for y'all, something to keep you warm with plenty of ignitions during these Christmas times. And uh, that's pretty much all I can think of. The uh, Santa hat is not required. First things first, like I said, this is going to be a solar warlock build with Polaris Lance. Um, Polaris Lance, uh, and I do not believe you need the catalyst. The only thing the catalyst does is gives you Firefly, which I don't think is necessary for this build at all. But Polaris Lance itself has precision hits, return ammo to the mag, and landing four precision hits loads a delayed solar explosive round for your next shot. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether that delayed explosive round does like scorch or counts as an ignition or anything like that. I'm, we'll see as we go through it. Kind of the whole point is we kind of walk through the build together and learn it together, see what's going on. But it pairs really nicely with Dawn Chorus, apparently, because Dawn Chorus allows our Daybreak projectiles to deal more damage and Scorch targets on impact and improves our Scorch, where we gain a small amount of melee energy when our Scorch damages a target. And so I believe that improved Scorch, let's take a peek here. Let's go to our trusty resource, the Destiny Data Compendium. We'll go over to Exotic Armors and we'll go ahead and search up Dawn chorus and it looks like if we look at dawn chorus we have scorch deals 200 percent increased damage and grants five percent melee ability energy per tick so that's what it says when we get in that's what it means when it says that we get improved scorch which is i mean 200 percent bonus damage that is a three technically that's a 3x increase so pretty impactful kindling trigger where Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch to unscorch combatants. So the idea is we get Radiant, and then every single bullet that we fire with our Polaris Lance is going to load up these delayed solar explosions and scorch enemy targets, which is going to be increased by 200% thanks to our Dawn Chorus. To get Radiant, we could obviously go with the Ember of Torches if we wanted to, um, but with this season, we could also go with Flint Striker, where Rapid Solar Weapon Precision hits, and rapid solar weapon final blows grant radiant. Obviously, Polaris Lance is all about landing precision hits. So we can't just take Flint Striker, then we don't even have to run Ember of Torches, don't even have to worry about it. And we can just use this to literally always have radiant. I think we also might want to go Heart of the Flame so that casting our solar super grants nearby allies radiant and increases the damage of our super. Because I think I'm gonna play around with something a little untraditional here that I feel like maybe some other people that are showcasing this build online might not be guiding you towards. So might have a little bit of variance. And I think we'll also probably want Revitalizing Blast so that causing damage of the solar ability weakens champions and bosses. Love that for this build. We'll go Wished into Bean so we can have supers up a little bit more often. Maybe Blast Radius. And then we'll go Raise of Precision so that while we're Radiant, Solar Precision Final Blows will cause combatants to ignite. So we get Ignitions, Precision, Solar Final Blows. We get Ignitions just from all the Scorch we're applying when we're shooting our Polaris Lance. And we get those big solar explosions and take a look at our subclass. Now, on our subclass, like I said, where I want to deviate slightly is that Dawn Chorus improves our Daybreak projectiles and have them deal more damage and Scorch targets on impact. Daybreak projectiles apply 30 Scorch on hit and deal 90% increased damage. Typically, it's like sacrilege to run Solar Warlock and not run Well of Radiance, but I feel like anyone who plays a lot of Solar Warlock at this point in Destiny is probably sick of running Well of Radiance. So if, if you want to play Solar Warlock and you go back to the flying, you want to go back to the flying Solar Sword, this, is, this build is a great excuse for you to be able to do just that. So we'll go ahead and throw on Daybreak. As far as fragments go, what the first thing I want for sure 
is the Ember of Ashes so that we apply more Scorch stacks to targets. So that just further increases the amount of Scorching that we're going to be doing to everything. Probably want to go something like maybe the Ember of Empyrean so that we can extend our Radiant and Restoration effects whenever we get Solar Weapon Final Blows, which will be quite frequent. And then we'll go over here on our Grenade and throw on Healing Grenade so we have a way to get Restoration in the first place. You could also alternatively do something like Heat Rises and Phoenix Dive and eat the grenade and dive to go ahead and give yourself restoration. And then you could go a DPS grenade instead. Me personally, I'm going to go ahead and go this route with the healing grenade because I feel like it's a little bit easier to execute and there's less steps. And I always love the simple builds. Touch of Flame also gives your healing grenade restoration times two instead of restoration times one. Really? Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. So I guess we get restoration times two anyway. Yeah, so maybe don't even bother with heat rises. Ignore everything I just said. As a result, I think we can go ahead and go healing rift. I don't really think empowering rift is going to be super useful here because I believe that the buff you get from empowering rift is canceled out by the buff that you get from radiant. So I think it's kind of redundant to run both of them. Incinerator Snap versus Celestial Fire. I think I'll go Incinerator Snap just because it's more Scorch Stacks. More Scorch Stacks equals more ignitions. Generally, I feel like this one's better for PvE. The only downside is range, but I think we'll be fine. For our other two Fragments, um, I kind of want to lean into all the ignitions that we're going to be doing. So maybe we go something like Ember of Char so that our Solar Ignition spreads Scorch to affected targets. And then we could maybe go Ember of Eruption so that our Solar Ignitions have increased area of effect. So all these Solar Ignitions that we're going to be causing, we're basically just continuously blowing up the entire battlefield. Um, as far as mods go, uh, definitely going with the Harmonic Siphon. I like the Heavy Ammo Finder. I think maybe we just go ahead and double up on the Harmonic Siphon. Or maybe we go Heavy Ammo Scout so we can get some ammo in the hands of our teammates. Um, be a little selfless far down here goes i think we'll definitely want a harmonic loader and maybe we'll go something like impact induction since we're going to be getting to use our melee abilities a lot so we can go ahead and continue to fuel our healing grenades and maybe we just go ahead and double down on impact induction or we could maybe go something like focusing strikes so that we get class ability energy and grenade energy every time we hit something with our melee. Let's go ahead and try focusing strike. Although I think double impact induction would be fine as well if you wanted to go that route. We're gonna go ahead and spec into some resistance mods. So the activity we're gonna be running has a lot of void damage and a bit of solar damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and slot into those. As far as the boots go, definitely want to invest in some surges because this is i mean this is the solar damage build so we're just gonna go double solar surge and then down here we can go ahead with reaper and time dilation so we increase the duration on both of these solar weapon surges as far as weapons go obviously we're going with polaris lance i'm going to go with a disorienting grenades grenade launcher as well and then i'm going to go ahead and throw on my apex predator solar rocket to benefit from those solar surges and the reason i'm throwing all of this on is because we're mixing things up today with the christmas special we're not actually going to do the coil like we typically do we're actually going to go ahead and hop in and do a grandmaster nightfall to make sure that this bill, you know, if this bill works in a Grandmaster Nightfall, it works in everything. Arguably the hardest activities in the entire game aside from day one raids. So if it's gonna work in a Grandmaster, I think we're good to go in literally anything. This being the Christmas special, uh, like I said, we are gonna have a couple special announcements in this video, starting with a giveaway. I wanna do a giveaway with this video. We're gonna give away three emblems. We're gonna give away a GDS 89 emblem. We're gonna give away a Draconis Tetrachroma emblem, and we're gonna give away a Bloodstream emblem. All you have to do to be eligible to win the emblems is like the video, be subscribed to the channel, and comment down below which of the three emblems you are interested in. We have the three lucky winners for the Christmas special good luck to you hope you enjoy the video so get started taking some heat go ahead and throw our healing grenade boom right there we do indeed get restoration times two and we can go ahead and continue to stack it thanks to our ember of empyrean whenever we get kills with enemies typically i'm concerned with ember of empyrean and activities like grandmaster nightfalls because kills don't happen quite as frequently but i'm not noticing a huge problem so far i feel like i had it for that entire engagement back there so we're just gonna hang back here, chill in our healing rift. This has this build has a lot of healing, is something I noticed, because you can invest in all of your healing abilities. So you're pretty safe. 
And this build is able to stun both of the champions in this activity without any champion mods whatsoever. Because with Radiant, as you can see in the lower left, I have anti-barrier icons on all of my weapons and Ignitions stun unstoppable champions. So if I just shoot this guy enough and get some Ignitions on him, it'll go ahead and stun the unstoppable. So boom, he got ignited, stunned right there. Just keep spamming, spamming, spamming. It'll just keep getting ignited and it'll blow up eventually. Okay, we're gonna back up a little. I'm going to try and chip away at the squishier enemies so I can get my restoration loop going a little bit. Get that buff extended plenty. And then we're just going to absolutely map these knights. See, there's just, there's, everything's blowing up. Clink, 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 clink. Perfect. Let's get, a, let's get some Dawnblade action going. Swing our sword at all these guys. Pretty much one shot everything. Get some scorch on that unstoppable right there. We ignited him with the dawn blade, and then we can just keep flanking away at him. Oh my god! He kind of got like he got destroyed. If we ran him, we could have done a finisher on him. Yeah, that, guy, that guy got killed super quickly. And then of course, if we want to get in close engagements, close engagements with enemies, we have our disorienting grenade launcher. We can just throw a little GL shot at them. They can't see. We're good to go. That was pretty smooth. Speaking of the Twitch streams, announcement number two portion of this Christmas special video. Um, all y'all who have been coming in the live streams, twitch.tv slash to watch us record these Willa builds live and even participate in them. Um, I've been blown away by all the support all y'all have been showing. And like I said, I just want to find a way to give back. So I wanted to let you guys know if you don't come in the streams often or if you've never been in here, on December 30th, we're going to be doing a massive stream where we're going to be giving away a ton of rare emblems like Draconis Tetrachromos and Bloodstream emblems, GDS 8.9s, and other various rare emblems that are no longer accessible in the stream. We're also going to be doing things like giving away Nintendo Switches, giving away PCs even, and it's just going to be an all-around fun time. We're going to do Grandmaster Nightfall carries, maybe record a couple episodes of Will of Build during that stream. So. I, you know, I would absolutely love all y'all to come by. I would love to meet you, especially if you've never been to the stream or if you've been in here before. I'd obviously love to have you come by again, get to say hi to you and have you participate in the giveaways, potentially win something, uh, have a little Christmas spirit to you. So again, that's December 30th. I don't know exactly what time we're going to go live. It's probably going to be somewhere around 5 or 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, but you can know exactly when we go live if you scroll down a little bit into the description and join my Discord server and link down there. Alright, let's get Dawnblade in here. Maybe even fly in a little. Icarus Dash to move out. Dawnblade actually feels really good in Grandmasters. Almost as good as those 10 gifted subs that Jamie just dropped right now. So, Jamie, thank you. Like I said, you guys have been ultra supportive. I can't believe it. Jamie, thank you for the 10 gifted. During the Christmas special, too? Huge. All right, let's keep plinking away. This build is so perfect for GMs because GMs are all about just, like, playing safe and playing from range in any situation that you can. So, a build that allows you to just chill and hang out back, you know plank away from complete safety. I mean, we're, we're golden. I'm not getting, n nothing is even laying a finger on me. I'm just putting a bunch of solar nuclear explosions into all their heads. Before we uh, get into this boss fight, I, I want to take an opportunity to, I mean, you know, I know I say it a lot and I don't want to get too sappy, but I mean, I made a YouTube post kind of talking about how this has been the best year of my life. Um, and it, it's in no small part thanks to all the support that all y'all have shown. The channel in this year alone, I think, went from about 70,000 YouTube subscribers uh, to now we're closing in on about 220,000. Um, I, I bought a house this year. I got married this year. Um, I, you know, strengthened all my relationships with a lot of my really close friends. Um, I met a lot of really cool new people. Which is... Let's see, let's see what this Dawnblade does. This meatball is notorious for being the absolute worst part of this Grandmaster because of how tanky it is. And we just, like, what? We half helped it with two Dawnblades right there? I feel like that's pretty solid. Okay, now we need to keep our restoration going. Oh, yeah. Restoration times two just from throwing a healing grenade at our feet? 
sign me up. And then we'll shoot this wizard with a blinding grenade launcher. So the wizard can't do anything to us. Another blinding grenade launcher. Okay, I just got one shot by the servitor. Cool. So this dude, like, basically can't hit me. And I can just do this all day. I don't even have to reload my gun. Okay, he can't hit me, turns out. But I have a healing rift. So I'll just sit in the healing rift and then I'm good to go, right? Uh, where's his crit? I can't see it through the trees. There we go. Yeah, I never have to reload my weapon. I can just do this all day long. Oh, yep. There's the ignition. That's what we wanted. Oh, no. Yeah. Got our radiant back. Shield goes up. We can shoot through it because we have anti-barrier. And we're just going to keep shooting explosive solar shots into you, and you're dead. All right, I want to try and put as much damage into this guy right away as possible. So I'm going to start with my bait and switch rocket. And then we're going to shoot a couple shots of Polaris Lance, get the reconstruction to get a new rocket. Then we're going to go Dogblade and just swing, swing, swing. I actually want to try and kill... Okay, so we already phased him to his invincibility orbs phase. So that's a, that's a pretty sizable chunk of damage. Get the little patented running revive. Okay, let's get a few more rockets down on the boss. I'm going to shoot him a couple times to refresh my Radiant. And then that'll also give me bait and switch on our rocket. And we're going to get some more wizards. Get some blinding GL shots on the wizard. Maybe throw our celestial fire. I'm just kind of trying to deal with this wizard. Big part of uh, successfully beating this part of this GM is making sure that you really focus on those wizards. Because they, they will mess you up. Get a healing grenade down. And this wizard's finishable, I think. So there's one. So we got one more to go. And I'm the last alive. So we're going to see if our combination of Icarus Dash and healing tools is going to be enough to keep us safe. Shoot a blinding GL so that wizard's not poking at us anymore. Hopefully safely pick up our teammates. I was on completely the other side of the arena, and I just kind of made my way all the way around. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely learn how to use Icarus Dash with this build. Use it to maneuver. Use it to stay safe. Use it to reposition. Huge part of this, undoubtedly, as you can see right there, what just happened. Now we're just gonna try, just gonna try and poke him down. With Radiant, you one-shot all of his uh, retaliation orbs. I'm gonna shoot right in between the little mirror of the, of the bus. Gonna keep maneuvering. Completely out of heavy ammo, it's a 4 jam, but our player slants can go ahead and mop him up just fine. Killed him pretty quickly there. It'll be interesting to see how the build performs in areas like this where we're in really tight corridors and we don't get the luxury of playing that long range. I think it's going to be a lot of our disorienting GL. I know we have an unstop somewhere around here. Found him. So we're gonna try and stun him with our Scorch. Just like that. And yeah, once you get the stun on him with the Scorch, he basically falls over. There's a big ignition for us. Got a nice little cheat angle. Because if I just spam shots on him, I'm just going to continuously cause ignitions. I don't even have to worry about any of the enemies that are next to him, because they're all just going to die to the ignitions. Look, pretty much everything died except for the other super tanky enemy. And get a finisher on him. And heavy bricks? No. I think I'll use my Dawn Blade on these guys. Oh. And I basically... Okay, I just destroyed them. So I guess I have a little bit of Dawn Blade left over. Clean up some of these odds.
And unfortunately, there is no crit spot on the Threshers, so we can't do our Polaris Lance perk on it. I know everyone hates these Threshers so much. And I'm with them. I wish they had a crit spot. If they had a crit spot, I wouldn't hate them nearly as much. Threshers actually have an anti-crit spot. Shooting their turret does less damage than shooting the main ship. Wait, really? 1429, 1429. What? Who made Threshers? They have like six different damage options depending on what part of the ship you shoot at, apparently. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Okay, that guy just got destroyed. Can we do the same thing to his buddy? Pretty much. Can we do the same thing to the unstoppable incendiary? I love me a good long range build. I wonder how this would feel if you got two friends and they both ran the exact same thing. You probably one shot everything from like 9,000 yards away. Okay, throw a little bit of that. And then we need to get enough scorch shots into this unstoppable incendiary to get an ignition to get him stunned. And boom, there we go. Unfortunately, I don't have any rockets or anything. You can. I love getting Radiant just by hitting precision hits on him. Yeah, once you get the first on, he's pretty much constantly exploding. Let me Radiant. Shoot right through that shield. And then let's hit some crits so we keep our Radiant. We can refresh it through... Kindling Trigger, I believe it was called. Sorry, Kindling Trigger or Flint Striker. Get them mixed up. Yeah, this is super fun. And it feels, really, it feels really strong, and it's super simple to use. Which is one of my favorite combos. We really need a special brick, so I'm hoping one of these guys drops a special brick before we make our way into the Tormentor room. I'm not gonna lie, that was a big part of my strategy. Here's my special brick that I needed. And the reason I want a special brick is because the number one way to deal with this room, like I said, we have a disorienting grenade launcher right here. If one person on your team has a disorienting grenade launcher, you can just do this to the perimeter the entire time and he can't hit you. The entire time. Doesn't matter what mode he's in. All you have to do is really focus on clearing the eyes bonus points if it has auto loading too you don't even have to reload it in between nope just keep shutting him down remember when Bungie was doing all that marketing and they said like we have made the scariest enemy in the entire game it's pretty funny and he's gone. Scariest enemy in the entire game. Okay, here we want to be sure to kill the champion first. Because killing the other one is what spawns the thing. And I want to show the cheese. So we'll kill the champion, and then we can work on the other one. And for anyone having a tough time with this GM, there's a cheese for it that makes it so easy. So you just wait. You do not kill this because that's what starts the boss fight. You can get up there. Like relatively easily. And then the only thing that can kill you is like if knights shoot fire up there. All you do is jump up on this orange gable. And then you're basically going right here. You can do this on all three classes, by the way. And then you kind of have two different path options here. If you're on a hunter, in my opinion, this is the easiest one for hunter. Oh, as you can see here, it's a little bit more of a struggle on Warlock. And we're going to go ahead. You kind of want to like hit this and mantle it almost. Maybe use the Icarus Dash for help. 
There we go. And then you kind of want to go like right above where you currently are. Oh, messed up a little. Yeah, like I said, this one's a little weird on Warlock. But yeah, right above where you currently are. And then you kind of like jump out into the right to get on the roof. And then boom, you're right here. You have this whole like patch to hang out on and shoot the boss from. It's really nice. Instead of going for that little bracket there, there's like a little thing you can mantle if you jump straight up. And you can sit on it. And then once you're here, you can skip that little hanging part entirely. And just go right for that piece. I don't think we want to do a cheese for a will it build episode. But I just wanted to mention it just in case any of y'all are struggling with this. And you know, you want an easy clear, get your conqueror seals. I get it. You know, we're going to hang out down here. I think the key with this boss fight, because I haven't done this new boss fight as much. The key here, I think, is going to be to play it very slow. And anytime he spawns adds, kill every single ad before you even think about damaging him again. That's what I'm thinking we're going to want to do. And then also, there's a lot of the corruption things hanging around. Making sure we're always killing the corruption things, I think, is also going to be pretty important. So we're just gonna we're just gonna plink away at him. And the second he spawns as, then we're done. We're just exclusively focusing on the ads. So boom, there's ads. Just focusing entirely on the ads and not bothering with the boss at all. And then obviously the darkness things that he spawned, like I said, that's what puts the corruption all over the battlefield. So making sure that we're always killing those is gonna make the whole battlefield a lot safer so you can stay away from him. That's the key here. Cause this fight seems really bad, but I think this fight is only bad if you rush it. Cause as you can see here, we have the full arena. There's really nothing that's shooting at us. It's just him. We're in a pretty good spot. Now we have some more ads. So yeah, taking care of all these they have objective markers on them too, so they're hard to miss, but that's what takes care of all the goo. There must be another one somewhere, yep. And now it'll start to wither away and then you have access to the full arena again. Chipping away, and then once we get him kind of low, I think that's when we can all pop our supers and pop our Dawn Blades and just absolutely annihilate him. Maybe when he gets to like a third of his HP. A ton of special bricks over here. doing something. Well, what? Okay, let's get rid of these corruption nodes. Because what's really going to mess you up is all the uh, corrupted floor that's going to do a ton of damage to you. If you focus those corruption nodes, you're golden. Use your disorienting GL player to blind the knights so they can't do anything. Take them out right away so they're not spitting fire all over the arena. I'd say it's a pretty easy fight. Nice and slow. Probably now that we're kind of playing this fight a little slow, it's a little rinse and repeat. Um, it's probably a good time to mention to y'all that, you know, I hope you've been enjoying the recent upload schedule where we've basically been doing a video a day. Um, I was lucky enough to just have a lot of vacation time from work that uh, doesn't carry over to the next year. So I just used it all at the end of this year. So it allowed me to uh, put a lot more time in the videos and make a lot more cool stuff for y'all. Uh, typically, for those who don't know, I, I am not a full-time streamer, not a full-time content creator. Um, I do have a day job. So typically, my upload schedule can't be like that just because, you know, I got work and whatnot. But I had a little bit of extra time for y'all. And uh, you guys have been ultra supportive on the streams. A ton of y'all have come by and used your free Twitch Prime subs, your Amazon Prime subs. A ton of y'all have even come and been so generous as to gift subs and things of that nature and financially support the channel. And, uh, you know, videos cost money to make. And uh, you guys went crazy this month, took really good care of me. And so, you know, I had some more funds to make videos with. And, you know, we ended up basically doing a video every single day. I think we're going to end the month with maybe uh 25 total uploads or something of that nature i'm not exactly sure but it's gonna be it's gonna be somewhere in that territory so um like i said hope you all enjoyed the uh the big december of videos um it was a pleasure definitely looking forward to uploading a ton in 2024 and hopefully we'll be able to have a pretty high upload volume but uh you know like i always say no this happens without y'all i appreciate it you know thanks for giving me the opportunity to make really fun and really enjoyable content for you and uh hope you continue to enjoy the
the videos. Hope you continue to enjoy the streams. And, uh, you know, this one, obviously, will build. Like I said, doing some giveaways through this one. I'm gonna show you the screen so you can take some screenshots if you'd like. Uh, so you can bring this into your own arsenal. Make sure you comment below what emblem you're interested in, the Bloodstream, the GDS89, or the Draconis Tetrachroma. And definitely hope to see you on December 30th for the big celebratory giveaway stream. Gonna be doing a ton of giveaways, like I said. Uh, and if you want a notification exactly when we go live on December 30th, join the Discord server linked in the description. That is also where you can post your build in the Will of Build channel to be featured in one of these videos. Hope you all had a great 2023. Hope I did what I could to make it even just a little bit better. I look forward to entertaining you in 2024. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.